to resume recording. No, I do call on and off. Okay, perfect. So, so one of the great features, and, and we, you know what, we all get busy, absolutely, right? So again, with listings, I, I'm going to tell you guys, um, you know, just some of my behaviors as, as a human uh, when it comes to real estate. Uh, and especially in today's market, when we're watching prices going here, there, and everywhere, a lot of us are definitely curious. We're watching, we're, we're thinking maybe a move, but do we really have to? I'm always looking at real estate. Um, I would like to move. I probably, uh, I have no definite timeline. Uh, and I'm one of those people that when it happens, it's like, boom, it's going to happen. And it happens. <laughs> um, I don't, I, I don't plan so much ahead and, and strategize around that. I imagine that there's a lot of people out there that, that are just like me, where they are on there, they're curious, they're looking at listings, they would like to move. Uh, maybe it's not feasible right now, just with the you know the way the market is going. We can definitely sell our house, but you know where are we going to move to? That sort of thing. Uh, we are seeing a shift in some areas, uh, which is great. I know in my area there is there is a little bit shift. Um, but it's just engaging with them and understanding that a lot of your leads that you guys generate, they're in that research phase. So they're just in those preliminary stages where they're just learning the market, seeing what's out there, um, and, and really just curiosity for the most part. Uh, so just be okay with that process. And, and it's really a matter of what you're doing now to ultimately earn that business. And you can let the lead know that that's, that's all you're here for is, is, you know what, I want to be given the chance to earn your business. What can I be doing for you? Is there anything I can be doing for you right now? Uh, so one great, one great feature that you do have in here that we released not that long ago is the ability to select listings to send to a lead based on their activity with respect to those specific listings. So. For example, if we looked in here, you're going to be able to see uh, all the activity your leads, right? So you can see all the listings that they looked at, how many times they looked at it, if they liked or favorited that listing. Uh, so this is a great way to bring back attention uh, or draw attention to your lead or yourself with respect to their activities on here, whether you've spoken to them or not. Right, so if somebody likes or favorites a listing, you should be getting a notification about that. Um, the system is set up that way. If it's not, we can definitely set that up for you if you're not getting those alerts. Um, and then the same goes as if they look at a listing three or more times, you should also be getting an alert on that. Uh, so it's a great way to jump in. You can spot what they're interested in and you have that ability here to be able to select the listing to send to somebody. So once you do that, you can select one, you can select multiple, it's entirely up to you, uh, but you are able to write a note to them. So maybe it's somebody you're trying to get a hold of and you can say, hey, Crystal, you know what? I, I haven't had the pleasure of speaking to you just yet. I just noticed that you like this listing. Was there any information I can grab for you on your behalf? All right, something simple, nothing, you know, nothing too large or great significant. Uh, that note will go right here and then if we go down, they're able to see the whole listing is essentially that, or the email rather, is essentially showcasing that specific listing. Uh, so it's a different way that you can use to interact or engage with your leads, or you know maybe they, they seem to be looking at certain listings multiple times. You know I noticed that you checked out this listing several times. Would you like to see more listings like this? I can definitely modify your search, right? So adding that extra value in the back end of things, again, it goes into your customer service, right? So the byproduct of being great and amazing at that customer service, uh, in many cases, is going to be the sale, right? Um, so, uh, so that is that. So that that's something that you can do. Uh, and again, consistency is key, right? So many of you guys do have your filters in here. This second filter uh, right here. If you don't have these filters, again, reach out to our support team. We can install them all for you. Uh, it's very easy for us to do. If we click on this second filter, basically it pulls up everyone you've already tried calling at least one time that you've yet to make contact with that you, um, yeah, that you potentially have a good phone number for them. This filter will have you call those leads every two days. 
Okay, you can change this number if you want to, whether it's a two, a three, or four, or five, whatever you whatever you wish. Um, but if you're following the the calling structure of consistency and just keep calling, not leaving a message, most of your leads, if you are consistent, will recognize your phone number popping up on their call display over and over again. So um, most of them are going to answer out of curiosity. Right, so most of those robo dialers or spam calls or you know random solicitation calls, um, they're always from a different phone number. Right, and every time they call. So if you're consistent and it's the same number, you're increasing the chances that they're they're eventually going to answer. Uh, so this one here is quite simple. When you open up the first lead, uh, you have a lead navigation here. If you don't see the lead navigation, there's a button that says load lead navigation. This allows you to quickly go through one lead. You dial them. Uh, we suggest 23 to 25 seconds. That's going to be four to five rings. If they don't answer, you just simply, you know, you call, you hang up, you save the call, and then you would move on to the next lead. Um, and then you, you perform the same thing. So 23 to 25 seconds is four to five rings on the receiving end. Uh, so most people that have any inclination of answering their call is, is definitely going to do it within you know, four to five rings in most cases. Uh, it's also gonna allow you to speed through this call list. So if you called these 13 people and none of them, none of them answered, you just, you're, you're gonna finish that within five minutes, right? So it just allows you to power dial through your list and have more conversations in less amount of time. Uh, in here. So always trying to find those times as well where you can potentially block on your calendar and focus on it um, for, for no, I'm, I'm, and I'm not uh, saying, saying in your case, Cynthia, that you're not, uh, that, that this is you, but a lot of us think we're busier than we are. It's just a matter of making the time for it, right? Sometimes we just don't feel like it. And I can relate to that. We know we have things we should be doing, but we just don't feel like it anymore. Um, so it's just having that, that little bit of discipline with yourself. Uh, create a game out of it. Make it entertaining for yourself in, in one way, shape, or form. The, the only end result you're going to find is, is going to be beneficial. Right. Uh, so some of your leads in here, they'll transact in three months, six months, nine months, 12 months, 18 months, 24 months, you know, and onwards. Right. So how we like to look at it is all your leads are going to transact. It's just a matter of when and with who. So regardless of when we want that who to be you. Uh, and so all you can do is through your follow up and nurturing those leads and, and being ready to to act when they're ready to act. Right, so always, and you can ask them, what can I do for you? Is there anything I can be doing for you? Um, <clears throat> so Priyanka is asking, is there a way to tag more seriously? I'm working rentals to start, it's been less than a month and I have joined AL trying to get used to the CRM. Uh, so with the serious leads, you can tag those leads. Um, so whether you wanna tag them, you know, create a tag that's like hot, uh, something like that, um, whether you want to create a category for rating. So like here, it just says hot. But for example, if we wanted to edit and create an actual category, we can go, you know, edit and make it red. So then it goes to the rating hot instead, right? So then if we added another one, uh, if we've been down here, sorry, and added another one, we can do another rating and that one's called warm. Uh, then all your rating tags or whatever you want to start it with, uh, but then all your rating tags are going to be, where did the red one go? Where did the other hot one go? Just disappeared on me. Anyway, all your, all your rating tags would be grouped together. So apparently the other one disappeared. So that's fun. It's weird. Uh, so hot. Confirm. So now we've got hot and warm right so you have those razors so that's one way you can do it is if you wanted to tag them that way uh the other is down here so there is the lead rating rating right so wherever it's hot warm or cold uh you can filter you your leads by both of these okay so for example if i chose this one as hot okay so if we go back to the home screen here and we add a filter and so if we go rating the so rating status is hot for example this is where you'd be able to find all your leads in the system that you've classified their rating as being hot okay if you wanted to do it with the tags 
then you're using the tagging feature. So you can, you have different options here below. Uh, and then this one here, if we just start typing and let's, for example, hot, you don't, I didn't, I guess I didn't tag anyone with that. So warm. So this is going to pull up anyone with any of these tags. And so now we have the tags that have the warm tag on them. On there like that. Okay, so that's one way that you're able to do that. Uh, um, Cynthia does not want to call it her leads. Hey, it, uh, you know, not all of us like talking to people. Let's put it that way. Uh, so we are doing the Terror Bayless uh, webinars on Tuesday. And she might be, if you haven't watched any of those yet, uh, so those are every, every second Tuesday, essentially. So next Tuesday is going to be the next one. Um, and Tara's approach to, to your leads is much different than what we would standardly see when it comes to online leads or the coaching and, and calling with Beverly or with uh, Nick Moretti. Uh, she has a more, you know, step back approach where she sends them listings. She obviously gets them the listings. Uh, she reaches out to them or applies a campaign manually because she has it in her head mentally that she needs to do this. So it forces her to use her system every day. Um, but she lets and she puts them on a little drip. That's just a very soft, uh, non-invasive type campaign that she's she's created for herself. Um, and she calls it, she introduces her voice. So she introduces her voice. Um, sometimes it's like a month later, sometimes it's two weeks or a week later, um, but they're getting the email. So she says, now they've been seeing my name, they've been seeing my emails, they've been looking at the listings with my name and what have you. So now I'm introducing my voice and just really having a conversation with them uh, to learn about it. She says, whatever comes up in that conversation comes up. Uh, she's not forceful. She's kind of a little bit more stepped back. She does ask them, you know, how she's going to be able to, or she's going to be able to help them and how right now. Um, but if they're just looking, she says, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And it's just more of a, a, a different approach that we would normally see. Um, but she, it really works for her. So uh, that's one way to look at it. She does have her strategies that she uses in the system. So that would be something as well, where, you know, it's, it's changing our habits. So those habits are really relying on alerts. Uh, so those, those alerts when a lead is looking at a listing, right? So every time they come back into the website or every time they like a listing or look uh, at a listing three or more times, then she's watching those emails. So she's getting familiar with the names, right? Uh, she's got a lot of leads, so her, her brain must be amazing. Uh, but she does this every single day. And then she jumps into her system. So she notices that somebody's activity is starting to change. That's when she might reach out a little bit different, right? Um, so that's, that could be a little bit, um, you know, tricky for some uh, to, to make sure, but she does that every day or she'll send out personal emails. And she's always, every single day, she's in her system working her leads. Uh, but she's not aggressive about it. She's more of a laid back, softer approach. Um, yeah, so Cynthia, if you don't have the option to select listings in the CRM, just reach out to support. It could be your website that you currently have. Um, yeah, so it's, 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 they'll be able to kind of direct you on that. Um, so Michelle was asking where we write the note. Sorry, Michelle, I missed that. So when you have the listings, uh, this one has ones, I think. I think it does. No, nope. it was not active. So that one was not active. So when you're in here and you're writing the note, so any listing, and you write the note, you're writing it right here. Okay, so you write it right here, and then the note shows up down here. Okay. And I'm just trying to find my screen where we are at. Um, so we got Brad, so that's it for that. So, you know, Fatty is new to Agent Locator. Um, Fatty, are, are you, there's, there's so much to learn in here. Um, I imagine, I'm just going to pull up quickly. Uh, but I imagine you've probably had training in some sort, but let me just see here. 
Well, you're brand new. I'm like, brand spanking new. You haven't even had your training yet. <laughs> Come on the looks of it. Um, you have your training today, it looks like, with me later on tonight. Yeah, so we'll go over a lot of, so, so basically, Fatty, for you, we go over um, your introduction to leads and what to expect with these online leads. Uh, we then take a, to, you know, a you know, quick tour into your system to show you the basics, uh, but you do get to have more sessions. We don't limit you guys to just one sec session on here. Uh, there is a lot to learn. You guys are in real estate. Uh, you're not all going to be tech savvy. We understand that. Uh, so we you know, have as many trainings as you need to. Uh, the key to all of it is just being consistent with your habits. Uh, and, and really following that customer service approach when it comes to these online leads, what you're going to, to notice and what we've definitely noticed is that the customer service is definitely lacking uh, when it comes to these leads because, well, for some, it's definitely frustrating. And for some, they're just looking for the unicorns, right? The ones that are transacting right now, the ones that are serious about moving um, in the near future, right? So they if if you're not moving in the near future what some individuals are out there doing is they're basically kind of tossing these people to the side being like well they're garbage they're not worth my time um so the the lead itself is left with well consider yourself if if you were like looking into something but weren't quite ready yet and and the person gave you kind of like this you weren't important because you're not buying right now, uh, you probably wouldn't use that person in the long run things anyway, right? So it, it's maintaining that customer service level when it is with your leads, focus on them. And it's all about them. As much as we want this transaction to happen, it will happen. It's just a matter of their timeline, not ours, right? So it's, it's just be patient, be consistent, and, and really focus on customer service. When you guys are talking to them, if you guys are talking to leads, by all means, um, treat it as a conversation, right? So it's not a survey. Uh, I, I like to put it as like, pretend you're in a at a cocktail party and you have a whole bunch of strangers in the room with you and you have to spark up a conversation. It's just the topic happens to be real estate surrounding what they were looking at, right? So it's learning a little bit more about them, um, you know, you can talk a little bit about yourself, but we want to try to focus more on them. If opportunity at any time presents itself in any conversation to talk about something outside of real estate, I always use dogs because that's an easy one. So many people have dogs and they often also start barking in the background. Um, start talking about their dogs, you know, show genuine interest. So what kind of dogs do you have? You know, ask questions about those types of dogs. Like, are they a good breed to have? Like, I have kids and, you know, and things like that. When you take and you switch that conversation and you're now giving them the power, you'll notice a transition in how they're responding to you. And it all of a sudden turns into a more relaxed experience for both of you. And you're establishing a great foundation uh, for the beginning of a relationship uh, moving forward. Right? They're going to be a lot more responsive to you when you're following up. You can use, you know, whatever that, you know, that, that little tidbits of conversation in your follow up. You know, how are the kids doing or how's hockey? I, I noticed yeah, you guys last time were running out the door to hockey practice. How's that going? Uh, just simple things like that make a huge difference. Okay. Um, also leaving notes in your system. Okay, so thorough notes. Some of you guys are really great at it. Some, some not so great. Some don't even leave notes at all. Um, so the problem with that is when you connect with somebody and you don't have, if you don't leave thorough notes for yourself, they're gonna call, you're gonna be calling them back at some point. And it's gonna sound as if you've never had a conversation with them before because you don't have anything to go by. You're not gonna remember the person, I can promise you that. You're not going to remember the conversation. I can promise you that. Uh, so leave those notes. It really makes you sound that much more knowledgeable and capable and professional at the same time, right? If, if somebody's calling you back and like, yeah, well, last time we spoke, I know that you guys were just working on those re renovations and, and you, you know, you had a family holiday um, in mind, you know, were you able to do any of those things, right? People will be impressed that you actually remembered that information. Uh, the reality is, is you just left good notes for yourself. Uh, so the more detailed your notes are, the 
powerful, the more powerful your follow-ups are going to be. So how I, you know, try to, you know, put into terms is leave your notes as if you're expecting someone else to do your follow-up for you. Right? Pretend you're out of the equation. You have the initial call, someone else is going to follow up with them. Leave the notes as if it's somebody else going to do it. That way you know all the details are there. You're not missing because I've done it before too, trust me. I used to work in here and used to be on the sales side and I'd leave like short form notes for myself and then it's boom, six months later and I'm sitting there like one eye open wondering like, what was this? Uh, what did I mean by this? Like, who is this guy? And then you're talking to them and your brain's going and mile a minute trying to remember who this person is and it's it's not good right so it's leave those detailed notes your future self will definitely thank your current self um so michelle saying we did an ad on kijiji i can't find it so kijiji are you talking about the webinar is that the one because i think you're you've been messaging me about that if i got two people yeah yeah so that one the kijiji i've yet to get to that one <laughs> i've yet to get to that one so that one i actually haven't i have to go into kijiji because i haven't been in kijiji in a long time um it's just a matter of i guess our area like in where i am i go on sometimes we have another Sites that we use for all the Kijiji type stuff um, on here. So one thing you can do in Kijiji is 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 looking for um, you know real estate. So and I don't know if you can search. You used to be able to search for the people that are looking, right? So the ones that are wanting or looking for. Um, can you do that? So I had have to go through uh, for rent for sale. We used to have like wanted ads, right? Not just, but anyway, so what you can do, and I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll have to get that webinar for you, uh, Michelle, um, after I've gone into Kijiji again and, and learned it again, because um, they've definitely changed some things around in here. Um, but basically what you could do is you take these ads, Right. And sometimes it's, you know, because you'd have and maybe it's different areas are a little bit different. Uh, but basically, whether it is, you know, somebody that's looking for a certain property. Right. And it's responding to their to their ad um, and then send them. So what you can do is take your lead gen site. So let's just I'm just going to open up this one or even if here's your branded site. See, I used to do this back in the day when. I didn't even know Agent Locator existed when I first got my license and gosh, it would have made my life so much better if I knew. Um, so I was doing it through a, a crummy, I don't even know what type of brokerage site. It was the free one the brokerage gave me and it really wasn't that great, let's put it that way. Um, so here you could even go in and, and, and modify. So you can set the parameters, right? So let's just pretend it's Toronto on here now you could go on your website as registered uh but you could say you know if they're looking for a certain price point right so let's say the max you know whatever it is they need three bedrooms they need you know they're open to a townhouse or a house of any type uh and then maybe they need something else right so what you can do you can see this long extension here it is the actual url to this filter. So if somebody clicks on, if you were to post this somewhere, whether it's a hyperlink or what have you, when they click on it, they're gonna be brought to a page that already includes all those filters. Uh, so that's what I used to do, or just have it as the city, uh, whatever it is, and just letting them know you're gonna get an update every time now that a listing comes on the market that matches that criteria. Um, and we do, and, and you can mention anything about uh, any, you know, pocket listings, so to speak. So those exclusive listings, um, some, some brokerages, they, you know, the agents all share with each other, those exclusives, or maybe you're part of a team or you actually have exclusives. So that, that's one way to draw attention as well. So reaching out to those people that are looking for real estate as well, right? You can go after some of those potential FISBOs on there as well. So looking at the FISBOs, the people that, because uh, they used to tell you if it was listed, and I don't know if they do anymore, um, but listed if it was by, listed by, 
uh, a realtor. I know that one's a paid ad. So, oh, 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 yeah, because it used to tell you based on, maybe I have to be signed in, if it was an ad that was for a professional or if it was like a individual ad, that sort of thing. So that's one way like you could reach out. I used to reach out to people that had houses that they were listing or they were looking advertised places for rent, you know, kind of giving them a little bit of insight on that and why they would benefit from using a realtor to find a tenant for their, you know, their apartment or whatever it may be. Um, so it's just kind of targeting. It's very time consuming. I'll promise you that much. You can post ads on here. I'm pretty sure they charge you um, the minute you add a link to your website in there. Um, you used to be able to get tricky about it, but QTG is all over that now. Uh, so you can definitely post that in there uh, if, you're, if you're having an ad or just reach out to these people that are looking for real estate. Because there's a lot of people that are looking for real estate. Right? They're trying to find whatever it is that they're looking for and just show your value to them, right? You can, you can pull up some of the deactivated listings. We're noticing that in my area anyway, I'm not sure about all of your areas, uh, that some of the listings are getting pulled off the market, right? The, 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 uh, the gravy train in, in my area is slowing down so the gravy falling off of it. So it's uh we're seeing listings sitting longer in in some areas we're seeing listings getting pulled down off the market because people aren't willing to pay that price anymore right it's kind of it's shifting a little not too much but it's shifting you can tell it's shifting a bit uh so so that's one thing is to you know sell your services and go after those deactivated listings and just like hey i have a bunch of buyers uh you can also use and leverage your system right so um, you know, if you if you're targeting somebody that is a FISBO or looking for property for you know to you know to lease out or looking for a tenant, I should say, um, this here this listing exposure tool is is a really great tool to be able to pull. So let's say there is the um, apartment or whatever it is in let's say in Toronto. I'm just going to use Toronto in this. So this is gonna be connected to your board, okay? So it's connected to your board, whatever board you're set up with. And it's also connected with the agents in the area um, that are used, or so not in the area. So the, age, the all the other agents on Agent Locator that are also using this system, okay? So when I apply the filter of Toronto, okay? In all of our system, right? There's 200, 2,000, 267,000 uh, plus individuals that are looking for properties in Toronto. So meaning their searches are set to Toronto. They could have other areas included, um, but that's you know what this is. When you go in and you say, okay, now we're gonna narrow it down to a townhouse. We can see then that there's now 20,000 potential buyers looking for that townhouse, right? So anytime you list a property, this is the reach, okay? This is the amount of, of potential buyers it's reaching just in our platform alone, just on your board alone, okay? So it, you can go in and, and I'm gonna be 100% honest, I don't know if this actually pulls rentals. Yeah, it's gonna only do sales. So it only do sale prices in here, but... Um, Okay, okay, Jeepers. why is it doing this? Maybe I have to do a maximum. Maybe it'll allow me. Uh, okay, never mind. It does do rentals as well. So if you have, if you're going after landlords, you can do that. But also if you're trying to capture individuals, well, we've got, um, you know, well, there's only 17 active listings right now uh, that fall within Toronto between 1,500 and 2,000 uh, a month. Uh, but it kind of gives you a little bit of leverage, a little bit of a power tool, right? So use this database, not just your database, as leverage for yourself, okay? Because you can say, well, when I get that listing, your end listing, it's going to be advertised to X amount of people, like 30,000 buyers in my database are gonna receive information about that listing. 
right? So it gives you just that little bit extra weight uh, when you are reaching out to them. Um, Sadi is saying it's supposed to under sale and it'll be under that filter for the... Uh, Dun, 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 dun. Land for sale. Let's see, houses for sale. My own house is for sale. Is it moving? It's not moving. There we go. Add uh, filters. Oh, so for sale by owner. So there you go. And do they have one where there's walk wanted? Show wanted ads. There you go. So this is where you would show the wanted ads, of course. And then if you wanted it only by the owners, meaning they're not a real estate professional, right? Nothing like going after one of your own to get their listing. <laughs> so I will have that video hopefully soon for you, Michelle. Um, again, I'm just going to have to run through this, this new design of Kijiji to make sure that I run it uh, correctly, nonetheless. Perfect. So that's, yeah, so that's just using Kijiji, but, you know, leverage what you have, this information here, and whether you're leveraging Kijiji or, or any other thing, you're going on a listing appointment, right? You're going on a listing appointment, and there's, you know, you pull up even just the type of home, and a generalized, so you can do the price range of where this, this, this house actually sits, and then you could say, well, there's X amount of buyers currently in my database that are, are, you know, receiving and set up or wanting to receive listings like that, that are looking for a home like this, right? So it gives you that, that extra power and that weight. Um, especially it works really well if you aren't part of a large team or something like that. Um, so how do you actually advertise your listings? Good question. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do that. Uh, social media is definitely a great place to start uh, when you are doing that. Um, and let me go on here and go and pull up a listing so I automatically get logged in. I feel like this. So just so you guys are aware, when you click on a lead and you open up their listing, it will log you into their account. Okay, so I'm like logged into their account. So if you're ever wanting to do something in there, you can. So if you, there's different ways that you can do it. So if you're on the automated site and you want to advertise your listing, you're just opening up that listing and you're grabbing the URL, okay? That's all you're doing. If you have a branded website, it's gonna be the same idea. So let me just find somebody that's on the branded. Uh, actually, you know what? I'll just pull up. I think it's training basic branded. Either training app branded or training basic. I have a feeling it's basic. There we go. So on your website, so pretending this is your branded website, you just click on the listing again, you open it up. And then again, you're just grabbing this URL, right? So you do have on the bottom, or maybe it's not on these ones, it's on your, it's only on your, um, what do you want to call it? Your um, blog, that's the word I'm looking for. I'm doing two different things at once. So in here, you do have the ability, you just paste that URL. That's all you gotta do. The, uh, the preview is going to pull on there. Okay, so that's one way you can advertise your listing. Um, you're driving them to your website. Once you have this showing, you can remove the URL if you want to, because this is now acting as the link. The other thing that you can definitely do as well, which we, we often see realtors do, is they'll post the ad, right? But not post the ad, but add pictures, right? So they're just going in and adding photos to the listing or to the post, right? So there's a bunch of photos and then they're you know writing that description about the, about the property and then always including the link from your website to that listing. 
that way. No one wants to fish for information. Okay. I don't know about any of you, but it drives me nuts when there's no price on property. <laughs> I'm not going to dig for it. Uh, maybe if I was really interested, I would dig for it, but I'm not going to dig for it. Um, I just carry on. That's right. And I know there's a lot of individuals out there with that same kind of mentality. They don't want to fish for the information. If you're going to advertise it, give them the information that they're going to, to want um, about it to, to be able to see, right? If it's well out of their price range, then, you know, but agents, you know, a lot of times you're just trying to get somebody to talk to regardless if they can afford it or not. I get that. Um, but I know a lot, there's a lot of individuals that hate digging for information, or you just constantly see the comments on your post being like price, price, location, whatever, right? We're not giving them enough information with the post. Um, but sometimes we, we are doing that for a reason. So everyone's different. Uh, but I like personally when there's, there's actually somewhere where I can go to reference and find that listing for myself. So even some of the top realtors will post it. They won't put the price on the listing or on the post itself, uh, which then encourages you to click on the link to go to the website, right? If it's you're giving them a bunch of information, but maybe you're not posting the price, which is fine, but give them the link to go to your website to find that price, right? So then you're also driving that traffic to your website, whether it's your branded website or your lead gen site, which could then, you know, all in all, land you a lead, right? So, um, that's how you could advertise your listings. You can definitely run social campaigns with your listings or boost the posts. So once you have posted that property on your Facebook, uh, if you have a business page, for example, and you post it on your business page, uh, boost that post. You can spend as much money as you want per day um, boosting it to get it in front of a larger audience uh, to drive that traffic. Uh, where you're going to see the most leads from that in a boosted post is if you are using the automated site, because they will have to sign up to see it right away. Um, the other way you can do it is if they're, you're running an actual ad based on that listing and you're running a lead ad to generate the lead in the business. That makes sense. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's how you would share your listing. So I hope or advertise your actual listing, essentially. So I would share it on your business page, then on your share it from your business page to your personal page. Uh, you can throw, you can advertise your listings again, like on Kijiji, you can post an ad on Kijiji. When it is your listing, because you are a professional, there is a cost. I don't know what that cost is. I, mean, I have to sign in apparently. Um, you can definitely do it on Kijiji. The one thing with Kijiji is it's very, like as I said, it's very hands-on uh, because there's so many people that use it and so many people that post, right? So sometimes the agents will post, but they won't give all the information. They'll be like, you know, they'll give your, you know, put your information in there. Uh, but ultimately, you're waiting for somebody to fill out that form, you know, requesting details about your listing. Uh, but you have to keep going in and renewing your post or, or however you're doing it. Again, I have to go back in and, and check this out for myself again. But because you'll notice within hours, you will be on like the 10th page. Um, so it's just constantly like, you know, boosting and going in there, you know, a few times a day um, or at least twice a day in the morning and in the evening. And, and kind of renewing the ad or renewing the post or taking it down and reposting it so it's showing up at the top or you're paying for it like a paid um, sponsored sponsored ad on there. So that's how you do it. And basically when you're posting, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you're just, you're, you're uploading the photos, you're writing your description, you're putting your, your information in there. It's, it's pretty, pretty straightforward um, to post it on Kijiji. Um, Instagram and, and Facebook are connected. So depending on your, you know, you can link the two together uh, if you want to. If not, you know, post, just post a picture, post a couple pictures on Instagram of that listing, that sort of thing. People like looking at pictures, right? So, and you can include the link to the property in the description, uh, things like that. Um, mm -mm -mm, no problem out there. Uh, yes. So, so yes, so Jillian, I will send you the video, the Kijiji webinar. That's not a problem. I'm just taking your email and putting it somewhere where I'm not going to forget it. 
Um, and and it's not about finding it. So what happened is I've uh, I've had an account with Law. Well, I've been with Agent Locator for seven years now, and I had an account with obviously with YouTube, uh, and I posted a lot of videos. Uh, which were training or webinar type videos, and I posted them to my channel. Well, I don't know, it's about 30 days ago-ish, um, YouTube decided to shut down my channel for God knows what reason, I don't know. Um, and there's no humans at Google slash YouTube to talk to. So um, anything, any content that was on my page we're having to recreate, um, sadly. So. Uh, so yeah, it's been it's been fun. So we're getting through them slowly but surely. Uh, it will it will get done though. Uh, so yeah, so with the with the real estate, Cynthia is asking, couldn't you do the same with the Facebook Marketplace? Absolutely. So you can definitely go on Facebook and do the Marketplace postings and list properties for sale by all means, right? Um, and yeah, that's one way as well to to get it. If you're boosting or posting your ad as well. Um, if you're if you're creating an actual ad on like through your business profile on Facebook, you can choose. So sometimes when you're browsing, so you know when you're browsing marketplace and there's sponsored ads in there, um, that's actually through your like through a campaign that you're running on on Facebook. So it just kind of strategically places your property more frequently throughout those results when people are browsing through the listings in that area. Uh, so that's a great way to do it as well. Um, it's just, you know, spending a little money or you can just focus it directly on that. I only want my ad running in the marketplace and I'm going to spend X amount of dollars a day doing it. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely, definitely one way you could do it as well, Cynthia. That, again, as I said, would be, um, I don't know if you can do a sponsored ad when you're creating a post in there. I'd have to see. I, I've never actually tried to create a sponsored post in the marketplace on, on Facebook to see if that's even possible or if you have to do it through your business page and run a campaign and just have that campaign running into the marketplace. Um, but I'll definitely check it out because that's actually a good point that you can definitely run those campaigns through there. Okay, so Fatty is asking, when you advertise your link on Facebook, GG, um, et cetera, um, do you get charged per click? No, 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 no. If you're doing an advertising, you're, so that's a direct traffic campaign. It's, it's, it's basically, or it's, it's like subdirect. Um, I don't know what the word is called, uh, but it's not coming through pay-per-click. The only time you're paying for somebody to click on your URL is when you're paying for advertisement. So if you're paying for Google ads, yes, you're paying whenever, whenever somebody clicks on your ad as if they're clicking on the ad itself. If they're finding your name in the Google search results and it's not the ad itself, you are not getting paid or charged for that click. It's only if they click on your ad. Uh, Facebook works similarly the same uh, with clicks and it's, it's just a little bit different how they do it, but it, it depends on what type of ad you're running as well. Um, but it charges you either based on in the amount of impressions, it could be based on the amount of traffic it, draw, it draws, right? But you're always setting your budget in any one of those platforms beforehand. So you're not going to get any like, oh my gosh, surprises. Uh, you're always setting your budget beforehand when that happens. But if you're advertising, if you're just sharing your link on Kijiji or you're just sharing your listing on Facebook and somebody's clicking on you're not running an ad, um, no, you're not getting charged to click. If you're boosting that post on Facebook and you're paying, a, you know, let's say $2 a day to boost your post, um, you're not paying per click because that's more based on impression. It's, it's, it's getting that in front of a larger audience. Uh, you're not getting like a double whammy there. You're not getting, you know, charged to have it in front of the audience plus any audience that gay engages, you're not getting charged for that. So uh, it's a little bit different, but as long as, it's not like a Google pay-per-click or uh, a traffic type campaign on, on Facebook, then you're good. Yeah, no, they, yeah, I understand what you mean with the URL. They, with, so, uh, Fatty is just clarifying, I mean the URL for Brandon on Brandon website, not a listing. Yeah, so, for example, uh, if I go onto Google right now, Google, actually, I'll just go real estate, listings, and Toronto. 
these are ads, right? So if I click on any of these, there is a cost, okay? If I click on this, there is no ad there, there is no cost to the person that owns this website. Um, because we go mess, no cost, this no cost, this no cost. It's only these ones that there is a cost. If somebody searches your name in here and your website link shows up, unless it shows up as the ad and they click on that, then yes, there's, there's, there's that. Um, if they click on this, no, there is not that. There's no charge uh, for that. If you are putting it in Facebook and they click on it and you're just sharing your website, hey, check out my website, and they click on it, no, you're not paying for that. Okay, so any URL doesn't matter. It has to be an ad in order for it to click. Okay, so these ones here for more, you know, how I put it um, is why it is called K per click, right? Because you're paying per click on there. So hopefully that makes sense. You can advertise your website to friends, to family. You can throw it on your Facebook page. You can throw it on Kijiji. You can throw it wherever. Um, you're not getting charged every time somebody comes into your website. It's only if they enter your website through an ad link. That's it. So hopefully that, that's better clarification for you. Perfect. Uh, we've only got about a few minutes left here. Kind of went by really quick. Um, any last final questions before we head off here? No, oh, just wait. Uh, yeah, and it's they can support build the landing page for me to advertise on Facebook with the landing page to be linked to my CRM. Yes, yes, they can. So, we do have the landing page creator, uh, and that landing page creator can definitely feed leads into your CRM. So, when they're setting up a page uh, through that creator, it's basically uh, you stipulate, do you, want to, do you want it to go into just an email and you get a notification through email or do you want that lead to feed into your CRM? And yes, the answer is yes, it can go right into your CRM system. Um, if it's in your website, then 100% yes, it'll feed that lead into your CRM system. Um, if it's an outside landing page, so another uh, product or supplier uh, out there with these with landing pages, it, it might be able to, um, that one there, you basically in your user preferences up here, so up here, then you into your user preferences, down in your profile, you have this uh, feed leads email. So if you CC this email on incoming lead alerts on whatever that other provider is, um, or include it, you wanna feed the leads from that other provider into this CRM system, you just include this email as the, the receiving email, basically, or you CC it on incoming alerts. Most providers will know what that means um, if you are using a different provider that does that. Um, so, so that's it, so it's like it's like a unique, it's your parsing email is what we call it um, for you to be able to do that. But anything on our system, 100%, so you can have those all fed into your CRM system. Perfect. So awesome. Well, thanks everyone for staying on and participating somewhat today. It was, uh, I guess uh, Beverly actually had sent me a message earlier. When did she send it to me? I don't even know. Um, oh, I missed it. Uh, so she had actually sent a message earlier. So here I am waiting for her and she wasn't here. Um, but we will do a makeup session. It's just a matter of us coordinating and figuring out when the best day and time for that would be. Uh, but hopefully all is well uh, with with her and everything's good. I hope so. She had a little, it sounds like a little bit of a medical emergency. So, um, but we will be back in that next Wednesday, but the next Wednesday after for sure with, with Beverly. And then there will be a makeup session somewhere in between. So uh, just stay in, uh, we usually email you when, when they're coming up. Uh, but just notice that if you all of a sudden get a prompt, in your regular live dialing sessions. I believe they, they come a couple hours before um, or a day before um, that it could be, there could be an earlier one as well. So we'll, we'll make, we always have a makeup session. Uh, but thanks everyone who stayed on. And if you have any questions or need any help uh, with anything, just reach out to our support team. They're more than happy to help. 
And, uh, and then I've got uh, Michelle and Jillian here. I've got you guys on my list. So I'll get those, uh, those webinars up and out to you as soon as I'm able to. All right, perfect. Enjoy the rest of your day, everyone. We'll see you all again soon.